So one thing I like to do on this channel is pick out watches for different types of personas and collectors, as I do think that's a good way of understanding what are good recommendations for different types of people. I have a similar approach here today, but a tad different looking not at the collector, but more of the location, the environment in which the collector may reside. So I have five categories that we're gonna go through. I will present all the categories before we jump into it. I'll have a low, medium, and high selection. So we have all different price points rep uh, represented here. And I'm gonna try to mention only one watch per brand unless an instance is just too perfect to apply it uh, to that specific location. So before we begin, let's talk about the different areas and environments that we're gonna be talking about. First, we have mountains. So here we're looking at mountainous regions and environments that you'd find yourself maybe in Colorado in the United States or the Alps in Europe. Next, we have beach or on the water. This is really more specifically looking at environments where you're on a boat, maybe you're diving, swimming, or snorkeling, or are just generally wet or in an aquatic environment. Next, we have uptown. When we say uptown, we're talking more about the nicer parts of major urban centers. So maybe New York City and Soho, you have Paris, Tokyo, where you're really looking to try to be your best, mostly in fine dining, concerts, clubs, and just having a refined approach. Now you have the snow. So this is mostly where I'm thinking about you're in these colder environments, whether skiing or blazing a trail across the Antarctic or on an exploration. This environment has lots of snow, ice, and generally is challenging in its conditions at extreme temperatures. And then to round us out, we have the tropical environment. Unlike the on the water or the beach environment, this is your typical sandals resort style location. A margarita is probably nearby and the weather is sweltering and everything smells like sunscreen. So now we first have our mountains category. And to begin with our low option, I'm going to go with the Seiko Alpinist with the SPB121 with a name of a watch like the Alpinist. This seems to make the most sense. This version is more in alignment with the Saab 017. You have the green backdrop at sunburst dial with the cathedral hands. This model descends from a lineage of models from the late 1950s uh, that became popular as an extension of the Laurel family of watches, the first wristwatch ever unveiled by Seiko and commonly was used by Japanese. Japanese explorers. This model, 39 and a half millimeter case, 200 meters of water resistance. So you're gonna be completely covered for a wide variety of environments and anything that is basically thrown at you. And then also Sapphire Crystal with that 6R35 movement on the inside. Now next up here, we have a brand that was literally named after a mountain with Mont Blanc with the 1858. Now this entire collection could probably be a good choice here, uh, defined by its cathedral handset. You have those Arabic markers typically on the outside, also getting some with compass bezels and orientations. The version here is a more traditional three-hand option, a lot of inspiration from Minerva here. Uh, I was unveiled in 2018, solid 40 millimeter case uh, for field watch style, pretty straightforward specs, 100 meters of water resistance, SW 200 movement on the inside. Higher price than maybe some of the competition, but I think if you're going into that mountaineering theme, it just doesn't feel right to not mention Mont Blanc. And now to round us out here, we have Rolex with the Rolex Explorer. So there's of course some contested history when it comes to Sir Edmund Hillary and what he was wearing on his wrist. Many people are saying it was a Smith's watch and I think that has really been proven true, but there is of course a lot of mystique and association with the Rolex Explorer when it comes to mountaineering and uh, enduring the different terrains of high altitudes. The reference here is the 124-270. This one seems appropriate because it returns to form at 36 millimeters with that 43.1 millimeter lug to lug. You get the defining characteristic with the 369 dial, 100 meters of water resistance. This has the new generation of movements with the 3230 with that 70 hour power reserve. This is one of those watches that just kind of feels like it fits for this category without question. For our next category here, we have beach and on the water. And just to make this a bit more specific on what I'm looking at here, I want water resistance. I'm looking for serious dive watches uh, for maybe snorkeling, diving. And I also want to try to limit this down and look at ISO rated uh, just for security and peace of mind. So first up here, we have the Citizen Pro Master, the new auto automatic versions with the Fugu models. So the original 42 millimeter, the NY0040 Fugu dates back to 1989. Now Citizen has now basically brought these models back. They were available in different uh, just retailers on the internet, but mostly for the Japanese market. They've now expanded this out to different markets across the world. They have a variety of different dial colors to choose from. Now an automatic Miyota movement on the inside, the 8204. Does feature hacking and hand winding in this instance. 200 meters of water resistance. Also getting a full loom dial version, some PVD options. Uh, the watch is going to wear closer to a 42 millimeter case but I think this is a good example of when Citizen finally listened and uh, tried to cater more towards the enthusiast
enthusiasts than the mall watch crowd, which I am always a fan of. So some pretty solid, no nonsense, ISO compliant dive watches in that $500 price range. Now moving up to a watch from the medium tier, I would say, for at least this section, I have the Tudor Pelagos fixed. So this is a watch that is unquestionably a watch for the diver enthusiast, not as much the Pelagos that maybe everybody wanted, but still a very cool watch. You have these fixed lugs, which is kind of that defining characteristic of the overall approach. One of my favorite characteristics of this watch is the rubber strap. Many rubber straps out there, if you're familiar with dive watches, know that they are not going to be rather slim. Uh, they have this very chunky feel on the wrist. This does not have that to any degree. Apart from that, it does come with a conventional titanium case, 42 millimeters, lug to lug, not gonna wear it to its fullest extent because of the hidden fixed bars that are going to be behind the strap. 51.4 millimeters though, thickness 12.6 millimeters, and an automatic MT5602 on the inside. So this is more of that proper dive watch, and I'm glad that they chose the Pelagos to do it, kind of working on that Marine National connection and paying honor to it. And now for our last for this category, we have the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms with the 50, 15, 11, 30, 52A. So this is more that classic Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms from the modern catalog. If also, as we're kind of getting into this, if you want more details on this Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, as well as more dive watches, because I'm not gonna be able to go through any more than three here, a link to two helpful guides down below, one looking at the history of the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, and then also looking at a wide list of dive watches. So the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms is commonly known as the first commercially available dive watch, became available to the public in 1953. The modern version is larger, but retains much of the original DNA sapphire cap on the bezel, 1315 caliber on the inside, has three barrels to allow its 120 hour power reserve, five days, incredible loom, including in that sapphire cap bezel. And I would say this is the connoisseur's choice in regards to dive watches. If you don't care about flash, you just care about the history and getting a luxury package. Now next here we have Uptown. So again, this is more for that refined dress watch. You're going about uh, the office and then going to maybe a nice dinner afterwards. I'm thinking of more of a trendy downtown area. So to begin here, I'm going with the Junghans Max build. This to me is is that mid 20th century approach to design. I think of like a muse museum of modern art, which I do believe they often will have Jung Hans's watches available there. So this is right in alignment with what I would expect here for someone in this category. It's a watch that certainly leans on design more than it does function, but it's beautiful at that. I have a full video on these watches talking about the design approach, comparing them with Nomos, as well as a review of my Max Bill Chronoscope, which I have uh, recently posted in the last month which I'd recommend as well. That defining dial, the typography set, it's just simply a beautiful watch. Not gonna be for everybody. Some will find it rather sterile, but if you like it, you like it and it's unmistakable. Now also being available with sapphire crystals as well, which is good news for those that were a little tired of seeing acrylic on these watches. So next up here, when I think of this demographic, when I think of this type of area, I think the Cartier tank is very much a part of this. I think of socialites of the past and what they would wear in these type of environments. The Cartier tank just makes a ton of sense. Here we have the Cartier tank must uh, XL. This is available with 31 millimeter case, the lug to lug 41 millimeters. So I would say from a circular case equivalent, probably closer to a 37, 38 millimeter case. Uh, thickness is going to be refined at 8.4 millimeters. Big thanks to the automatic MC 1847 movement uh, there for the price probably the perfect rectangular watch design. It's iconic, it's unmistakable. It of course leans dressy, but given its reputation, it can set the tone no matter what you decide to wear and where you're at. So now given that we looked at a rectangular watch, I don't think it would make sense to look at the Reverso, but let's look at another watch from JLC because I think this is appropriate, the JLC Master Ultra Thin Moon. One of my favorite offerings from JLC outside of the Reverso collection, for some I would argue might be the Moon Phase watch to get, in the price range that it represents. There are a very short list of ones that I would probably look at here, and this is certainly one of them. 39 millimeter case, nine millimeter thickness, very wearable lug to lug of 45.8 millimeters. I would say it wears closer to a 40 millimeter case with that bezel to dial ratio, 50 meters of water resistance. Then you have that automatic JLC 925 AA movement on the inside. This has that extended 70 hour power reserve. My favorites are probably the silver dial, but also that blue dial is absolutely striking when paired with that moon phase disc at six o'clock. So next up we 
have a snowy environment. A few things I'm considering. I don't wanna be tied to the bracelet. I wanna have opportunities that it's going to look good on different style of straps because a cold metal bracelet in the snow typically is going to be very cold on the skin. Also, I am looking at mostly white dials here because I think it'll match the uh, terrain, but also we'll have those contrasting markers for good legibility. And then also I do want to keep in mind just having a rugged uh, ability to take a beating. Uh, typically these type of environments are not always the most forgiving. Now, first up we have the Casio G-Shock, the Casio, the GA21007A. So this version is the white case, white resin case with the black central dial surface coming in that Casio style and approach. Uh, analog digital display, $100 price point, a 45.4 millimeter case, but with that lug to lug dimension and its case silhouette, I'd say wears closer to that of a 41 to 42 millimeter case. So very wearable for a wide variety of styles. I like the white strap with the central case. I think this will give us a good amount of contrast and will pop out from the snowy terrain. Now for our middle tier here, I wanna look at, this one's fitting to me, the Marathon G-Star Search and Rescue Arctic Edition. So this is a watch that was specifically made for uh, units that are going to be in these Arctic or kind of frozen tundras type conditions. This watch is defined by its white dial and then I have the red pop with its second hand, basically reverse of the black dial that we've seen uh, that has become pretty much synonymous with the GSAR collection. I also like you have the tritium for nighttime legibility, extreme durability and ruggedness. It's built like a tank, has this deep seated dial. You have a 39 millimeter case when measuring with the bezel, it does extend out to 41 millimeters, but this watch wears closer to that of a 40 millimeter case, basically splits the difference from the case size to the bezel diameter. Thickness is reasonable. It does optically look a tad thicker when you look at it, just given the deep seated nature of that dial. Lug to lug of 48 millimeters, so pretty much right on par with what you would expect from a 40 millimeter watch. 300 meters of water resistance, SW200 on the inside and a sapphire crystal. And now for a high pick here, happen to pick both the Explorer models. The Explorer 2 Polar Dial, the 226570, just felt appropriate, but you can also mention any Explorer model. I do also think that the Explorer model looks amazing on a wide variety of straps. If you've seen these things on a NATO, they just look the part, put it on a leather strap, absolutely can work. Rubber strap certainly works. This is the only brand to appear twice on this list, but I think it's for good reason. The Rolex Explorer 2 dial Polar, it just has that iconic design language, really solid dimensions, functionality, legibility. You certainly could go for a different one outside of the 226570. My favorite is the 16570. I own the Polar dial version. It looks just as good on a strap as it does on a bracelet. And now for our last category, we have the tropical environment. So here we're looking at water resistance, but doesn't necessarily need to be a dive watch. Uh, comfortable in hot weather, so probably no leather straps here, rubber straps and bracelets only. And I also wanna lean into the bright colors and the environment that is this tropical paradise. So to begin here, we have the Doxa Sub 200. So this is, I would say, the entry level Doxa watch, but also one that's not gonna lean into its dive watch pedigree, more just about the looks and giving you a taste of Doxa, not leaning into the full definitive dive watch category and really being about the business. These are available in a wide variety of different dial colors as you would expect, but also done in a more playful tone. The watches come in with a price right under $1,000, $950 or $990, depending on the beads of rice or just going for the rubber strap option. 42 millimeter case, wears closer to a 40 and a half to a 41 millimeter. Thickness is reasonable, but still on the thicker side. 46 millimeter lug to lug, 200 meters of water resistance, and a no nonsense at a 2824 on the inside. Now for our next pick, we have that medium category. We have the Ball Marvelite Caring Edition. And this is a watch, you look at it first you know, glance, you're like, okay, not much going on here. What's up with this uh, colorful trim on the outside of those tritium tubes? But then you turn off the lights, get in complete darkness, and the party starts happening. This was released in 2020. There's a 43 millimeter option and a 40 millimeter option. You have these rainbow tritium vials for an intriguing nighttime display. A solid specs, so you have 100 meters of water resistance, SW200 on the inside. It is going to be priced in a range where it could maybe be overlooked by some, but solidly finished. Definitely polarizing though. This is not going to be a watch for everybody. I could see some saying, I don't wanna go near this thing. I don't like it at all. But for those that do get it and like it, I could see it being a interesting party trick when the lights turn off. Now for our last pick here, I have the Omega Aquaterra's, the new for 2022. I've been mentioning these quite a lot, but uh, they just seem like the appropriate pick in this instance, especially. You have these different dial colors. They're done with a PVD process for the majority of them. Then you have a different process for the terracotta version. I'm gonna go with the saffron version. This one has that mix of this 
kind of sunburst effect with this golden hue to it that I would say behind the terracotta is probably the most eye-catching and eye-popping. Uh, beautiful watches. Some people are down about the dates, but I think these just wear very well. They updated also the bracelet, the center link on the bracelet is more rounded off. I'd say it wears slightly more comfortable on the wrist. You have five different dial colors available at 38 millimeters and then five more at 34 millimeters that are also available. 150 meters of water resistance, just over 13 millimeters in thickness, so not the thinnest watches out there. Then an automatic Omega 8800 caliber on the inside, coaxial escapement, Metas certified, and coming in with a price around $6,000. But all right, guys, that is my take on looking at some watches from different locations and what you could potentially wear, low, medium, and high. If you enjoyed the video, thought this style was fun, we could do it again, give it a thumbs up, really would appreciate it. That would also be a good indicator if you want us to maybe do something like that, else like this in the future. Also, definitely check out teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. If you wanna stay up to date with the content, be sure to follow along on Instagram and also subscribe to our newsletter on the website dedicated written content, totally different than the videos that we're creating here. I definitely recommend checking that out. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.